Now that we understand some basics about pages versus posts, we're going to talk about more a bit more about editing pages and posts. And in particular, we're going to focus on the different ways that you can edit pages and posts on Uncanny LP. So even though it's a complicated page, I think it's worthwhile to start out with the home page itself. How this was built, how to edit it, how to make changes to it, how to add new elements. So before that, before we get into editing it, I want to talk about what we're seeing on the page right now. So this is the home page for the site that you would see when you first sign in. Now, in the top part here, we can see a large section with a background image, text on the right, and a button on the right as well. So that's all in there. And then there's another row that comes below that with a purple background and the white text. Further down we've got another row with some images and four columns. We'll talk about the four images or the four images in the four columns and the text within those as well. Next we've got another row with a create an account button. Then there's an image here, a title here, two columns. What we see at the top is separate. This is site-wide, so this is the header, and at the bottom we've got the footer. This is also site-wide. So those are not things that we're editing as part of the page editing process. So I mentioned that there are a few different ways to edit it. And I want to talk about how it's built and the different options. So first I'm going to click on Edit Page, and I'm going to open this in a new tab. I also want to enable the Visual Builder, and also open that in a new tab. So in both cases, this page was built with the Divi Builder. So we're using Divi provided methods of editing this page. There is also the WordPress editor, which has a visual view and a text view, which is also mentioned a bit elsewhere. We will cover those, but this page itself was created with the Divi Builder, and that's what we're going to use for editing. Reasons to use the Divi Builder, just before I go further, would be um, trying to accommodate more advanced layouts, incorporating a lot of different media types, and perhaps different elements and things that are included with Divi. So these are for more complex layouts with potentially some complex modules that you want to include on the page. It's a lot easier to lay out things like columns using the Builder as opposed to uh, using the WordPress editor. There's a lot more control and you can add custom CSS. So let's take a look at the backend editor first. So right now, if I scroll down, you can see this is the Divi Builder section. This is where the content for the page is actually coming from. So while I've got that up, so you can see that, I'm also going to open up this other tab, which has the Visual Builder in it. So this one you can see there are a few new elements on the page. You can see if, if I go to the section over here, the row, then I have these controls here. If I go to different sections, like the, uh, the text here, I shouldn't have clicked that. That's actually a hyperlink. So if, if I go over and I can highlight this text, so I can say uh, editing, and it lets me edit right in line. But what's important here is we want to focus on the, this section at the top here and how it's re represented in the back end. So we can see if we go to the back end, there is this section at the top with a row within it. And that section has three, three elements over here. So first there's a divider that doesn't really have much to it. It's just adding some space. And then in the slider here, if I go into that, you can see there's a single slide. And if I go to edit that, then you can see there's a heading, heading up here, welcome to your uncanny learning platform. There's button text, so switch back again, button text down here, create an account, create an account with a URL for it. And then further down here, there's actual content. So there's visual content there, just so you understand what ha what's happening though behind the scenes. There's some blank spaces, there's a heading, um, and you can see there's there's not currently a link for the knowledge base, but there is a hyperlink there. So this is actually a hyperlink, 
and there is an editor here that you can use as well for all of the text content. So you can't see the spaces in this view, but they are there. And I know I went quickly to do that. To do that. So I really just wanted to show this is how a page is assembled in the back end. So it consists of sections and rows and modules. And you set those up, and that's what defines what people see on the front end with all of these different elements. So let me just close out of that really quickly. And you can see over here, you know, we've got these elements here. We've got this, we're able to edit. Um, so editing slides is a bit more difficult. So the settings here enable us to, um, you can hover over them to see more information. So settings for the page, um, things like the history. So we do um, have a way to roll back any changes that you might have saved that you want to change. Um, here I could add a new module. There are settings again for uh, what's available there. In terms of the, the module itself, this is exactly what I was doing in the back end. So slider settings are here and then within that um, we can go in and click on that and change the slide settings. So this is exactly what we saw in the back end. It's just this is pulled out into the front end. I do still prefer to work in the back end. It's a little easier for me to see what's going on. Um, but for simple text changes, certainly working in the front end is, is very easy. And you can always save your changes this way and then, uh, and then continue uh, with other edits. So let's go to the back end uh, once again. So what we didn't show there is uh, how the background image is set up. And before we get into how these individual modules work, um, let's, let's talk a bit more about what these different icons mean and how to use these things. So for each one of these, the three lines in the icon, that means you can make changes to it. This is how you edit it. You click the three lines and it pops up with the settings. Uh, this uh, icon here is for duplication or cloning. And this one here is for removing something. So you can see very consistent set of icons, editing, duplicating, deleting, and then here for columns as well, we have different layout options depending on what works for you. And then for each of them, you can see there's a way to add a row. There's a way to add modules here as well. And if you wanted something on the other side, it is just a matter of dragging and dropping or if it's in a different section, uh, you can just move things around like that quite easily. So if I click, again, different types of objects have different settings. So the section itself here, you can see this is what I'm using. Um, this is where I define the background. So this is basically setting up the whole section that I'm working with. So these are consistent elements across this entire row. Um, so the only thing that I'm really setting in here though is the background image and there are a lot of settings. There's a lot you can do, a lot of customizations. You, could, you see I could potentially have a, a background video instead of the static image. Um, I could add some transparency to it. So there are a lot of controls for all the elements. You can add custom CSS as well. There's a lot of flexibility here. Um, then within that as well you can have a row. You can add multiple rows. So question might be, well, why would you have a section with rows within it? Why not just have individual rows? And the sections allow us to have, um, the reason we can have different rows and sections is because there are some things that might be common across a number of rows. Like maybe there's a background color, but maybe you need another row so that in one row you can have four columns, but in another row you can have two, but you still want them to ha have the same consistent background image that's not broken across uh, the different rows. So this would allow you to do that. Um, so the next section here, you can see this is where we had the, uh, the purple row. So this down here. So where we had the purple row. So we've got a background color here. Um, and then yeah, there's not much else here uh, that we set. And then it could have some custom CSS as well. But the important thing is this this full width header that's on there. So we've got the text for that. We've got the text here. So you can see exactly where that text is coming from. 
and again we're not doing too much else with it so all it does is have the text here and then this next section you know this is where we have the four images above the text the headings and the text beneath them and then each one of those had the image at the top so if I go down here you can see with the blurb module type then uh, it allows the icon at the top it's just a built-in module you don't have to add the images so we've got the the icon selection here so you can switch icons out we do want to use an icon and then of course down below here is where we have the text that appears beneath that so and then the titles here as well so open source we've got the open source the image above and then the text here so it's a standard module type it makes it really easy to reproduce and then when you're setting one up, you can always just clone it for the other ones that you want in there to make sure they have consistent settings across that. So anytime you're working, you can always click update. You can always preview what you've done again, and you always have access to the permalink, so the URL of the page up here. So just scrolling down again, if you're adding a new module type, then we can click on insert module. And there are a lot that are available here to choose from. Again, the best thing you can probably do when you're setting things up is adding one, trying it out, previewing it, seeing if it does what you want. Just experiment with it. And again, I talked briefly too about how we do have libraries um, for modules, basically layout libraries um, that kind of combine things into a layout. So if you click on Add from Library, um, if you'd if you'd saved anything. Okay, I'm not going to get too deep into any of the modules. I'm not really going to cover any of them at all. Um, just because a lot of them are pretty self-explanatory and it's better if you try them out. We will have a link in the knowledge base to additional documentation for the modules that are available. But again, it's a, it's a good idea to try things out or work from uh, layouts that exist. So I will cover some of those layouts in another module. But again, if you're adding a set, of layouts then there are a lot of options here again it's good to try these things um, so there's some from predefined layouts and then also some custom ones we've added to the library that you can load from here and they would add pre-formatted layout types so they already have the sections the rows the modules and then you could easily just edit them if they suit what you're doing so you can see there are a number of sections here if I scroll down further there's the call to action so the call to action is check out the demo. If we scroll down further, this is the the yellow section here with the button. And then beneath that, if I close that out again, then we've got the text section. So this is where we've got the image here. We've got the this is where we I did use short codes for the two halves. And you can do that as well. You could also create another row with with two columns in it just by adding a row here make it something with two columns and then for each of those you could just add text within it so I could just add text this way and then define exactly this is the other text I want save and exit and uh, now we've got that text over there on the right half or sorry the left half and if I update that and go back and reload the page we can just you know see what that actually did so let me wait for that to save very quickly and there it goes. So this is the other text that I want that now shows in this left column beneath the row that exists there now, part of the same section. So that is essentially how the page is built with the Divi editor. Um, again, for advanced layouts, very helpful to use the Divi Builder. Play around with it, try things out, edit existing modules, see what you can do with it, see how it responds. Um, a lot of customization is possible, but just be careful with that too. Um, you don't want to overcomplicate things, and then if you do have a lot of custom CSS, it can be difficult to trace things to understand exactly what's going on. So that's it for a brief introduction to editing existing pages that are built with the Divi Builder. And in future videos, we'll talk a bit more about the WordPress editor and um, how to do a bit more with the uh, the layouts that are available and some of the pre-built pages.